Okay, so in uh, today's uh, video demonstration, I'm going to show you a workflow of how to import in a tracked, manually tracked camera from Blender, Blender 2.8, and bring it into Fusion. Okay, so this is an imported Alembic file that's exported from Blender and then brought into the standalone Fusion Studio. I will also be showing you how to do the same thing using the Blackmagic uh, Resolve version of Fusion. Okay, so I believe this can also work on the free version. All right, so let me jump over to uh, Blender to show you the shot that I have tracked. And uh, let me just go through quickly uh, what I have done in this shot here. Okay, so this is the shot that was tracked and uh, all of it is manually tracked. You can see that I have tracked about 21 tracker points. And then, uh, should you want to bring it into Fusion or any other compositor, you can use the export features. Okay, so this is solved and uh, I've got a solve error of 0 0.5411, which is uh, quite good for this shot because it's about 325 frames in length. Okay, so but the manual tracking took quite some time, and uh, but the result is very good at this uh, pixel er error value, All right? So this shot was actually taken on my uh, mobile phone, okay, around my neighborhood, and uh, so I have to go through the shot and track and find a lot of uh, features to slowly track and monitor, and every time I go through each of the tracker points. All right, you can see by, by selecting one of the tracker points, which I've already locked here. I have ac actually changed the different types of tracking modes. Okay, sometimes it will track and then it will stop and then I have to continue to change to the different motion model. All right, so the, the thing that I discovered about tracking using uh, the Blender's uh, tracking module is that it is very powerful. However, you need to observe your features and then if you notice that your features are starting to uh, do things like rotating or change right you might sometimes want to change the different uh, motion model to continue an effective track and I find that uh, a lot of the features in the blender tracker is very useful that is after you solve right you will see this blue line here and uh, let me just hide my uh, track solve here and you want to get a very flat and smooth blue line so that will indicate a good solve now if you have a blue line and then it you have a lot of uh, peaks let me just zoom in and then show you uh, what the peaks will look like so right now I'm zooming in until you can see the uh, error value uh, that's going very very high up so if you go to a area where, where the peaks are very sharp that means that you got some errors within this area and you perhaps need to add more trackers or look at trackers that might be causing all these errors but because I've zoomed in so much uh, it appears to have a very high error value so if I hide this uh, blue curve and then show the uh, motion of the trackers you uh, represented in terms of green and red lines you can see that uh, I have zoomed in quite 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 a bit okay so I'll just talk quickly about how I tracked uh, in because uh, in an in another video for my class I already explained how to use the tracker so I won't go through it again but I will try to explain like what kind of features uh, would be good for tracking alright and also another thing that I didn't uh, really cover in my uh, previous explanation of the tracker is that you can actually uh, track something that disappears from view and then reappears again like for example this corner of this uh, manhole cover all right reappears again and if I want to sort of give more information to the track um, like in this case right it goes behind the column and then it reappears again in the other side uh, and I can actually drag and drag the uh, tracker reactivate it by clicking it here to continue tracking it again so let me just unlock this and then demonstrate how it works so uh, it will go behind a column that disappears and then reappears again but it go behind this column concrete column and it will reappear right about here this corner here so the tracker point is now here but I can 
uh, left mouse click here to reactivate the tracker and then I'll just click and drag to select it over the tracker points again and then I will use my manual tracker to test it one frame to see whether it follows okay it doesn't seem to follow then I'll just have to push it into place and then I'll try manually tracking it again and it doesn't want to follow okay so I'm gonna try another tracking model I'm gonna try using uh, perspective instead and uh, this is what I mean by changing your different types of tracking model for your uh, blender tracker and then continue to track and then it doesn't seem to be following it very well so I, I might have to manually track this myself uh, frame by frame then maybe I'll try to change this to uh, location scale and then maybe change to keyframe instead and then uh, continue to track and then okay now it, it's got a lock so I can just continue to continue to click until it finished tracking or I can click on this track to the end until the feature disappears again and in this case it actually stays put and it will continue to track that and these buttons are also very good okay so uh, like for example deleting clear uh, track path if you, every time you have a track that you where it's flying all over the place you know that the all the track information after this area is wrong you can click on this to clear the track uh, track information and then restart tracking again okay so I got a decent uh, track already and then I've given it some extra information then I can just lock this again all right now then I can run the solve again if I want to so to improve the tracking so I'm not going to do that because I already got a very decent solve uh, I'm going to show you this uh, dope sheet the tracking dope sheet which is a very good indicator of uh, whether you're ready to solve you know uh, when when you're solving of course you want to uh, get as much tracker points as possible uh, in to solve so one way to see whether you have enough track point to solve is to look at the color indication right now you can see this area has turned gray and then this area is still yellow and if you don't have enough track points uh, I believe it is uh, uh, I think it's a red color that means that you don't have enough track points in order to get a good solve so minimum you need about eight all right so uh, although it's yellow I still have sufficient points spread across each frame uh, in order to solve all right so this is a very good indicator to show you whether your uh, track points are uh, or whether you have sufficient track points to solve uh, for your uh, for your shot okay so granted this this is a very long shot okay and uh, you need to have as many points as possible you know and then it just happens that one of the points is actually this is actually a pigeon all right a pigeon that is resting on the ground you can see a, a couple of other birds sitting on the pavement so as long as you have a stationary point uh, that you recognize and then you can see this picture also disappears behind the column and I continue to track it as well and then it disappears again then after solving right you'll be able to get the uh, correct information okay so anyway um, this footage is shot at 25 frames per second and uh, I'm just gonna hit solve again just because I have that new information and I'm just gonna see whether I'll get okay there's not much change in the solve error it's still 0 0.55 okay so again uh, if you don't have enough points you for example there are some points right like uh, like pieces of dirt on the wall when you are very far away from the shot you can't if you cannot really see it let me just uh, unlock the view okay if you can't see the dirt uh, right from the beginning of the frame you might not want to track it you might want to wait for the detail to just appear closer like for example this uh, stain right that is on the wall uh, then once I can see it a little bit clearer then I started to track it now pressing L will uh, lock it to the center and then I have actually used a perspective tracker to track it and for me I tend to show the uh, search area which is pressing alt s uh, so that I will know what is the search area of my tracker now for novice trackers for beginner trackers right a lot of these things uh, in the beginning might uh, feel a little bit uh, hard and uh, I won't deny it uh, if you if you start to learn tracking for the first time especially manual tracking or supervised tracking which is like the standard method of tracking in a lot of visual effects studios right most visual effects studios right uh, would prefer to use manual tracking 
or supervised tracking over automatic tracking. Now in another lesson I've showed you how easy it is to use auto tracking on this shot. In fact, using Synthize on this shot, right, I managed to solve the shot in like a few seconds. Okay, although the error is about 1.1, 1. Uh, 1. 1, but still I managed to get a very decent uh, camera trajectory. Now you can spend time to go and solve uh, or refine it uh, as, as much as you can. Oh, another thing about the uh, tracker in uh, after solving, right, if you look at the uh, this drop down panel, you can see a bracketed number next to it. So this is a very good way to find out how much error you have on each of the track points. Now you want to keep the error like below one. Now if you have a track point that is like above one or two or three or even worse, five or six, you want to try to get rid of the, get rid of the track points or if you manually track the point with a high error, for example, this is track number 12. Uh, let me see what I can find uh, the track number 12 by pressing L. Okay, so this one has a high error because it only appears towards the end. Now, if you have a high uh, error, uh, a high error uh, tracker, there is an option for you to give it less, uh, less precedence when it comes to adding it into the solve. So if you go over to the tracker uh, weight values, right, you can reduce the amount of weightage. That means I will only give it about 70, in this case about 78% or about 0.78 value when uh, to when I take it in consideration for solving. Okay, so you can go over and find, like for example, I already reduced this to 0 0.78. Let's say I want to bring down this solve error down a little bit more. Okay, let's go and look for high error uh, tracker points in our list. So right now this one is uh, a value of one. So let me just reduce it even more. Let's give it about, about half, okay, half the consideration uh, when taken into solving uh, everything because since this one is very high at one right so I'm going to look for another uh, tracker that has a very high error value well actually most of them are are quite uh, already below one I found another one uh, tracker 005 okay so maybe uh, this one I will reduce its uh, weight okay by about 20 percent and then I'll run the solve again and looking at the solve error of 0 0.55 if I hit solve Okay, so I actually brought it down by, point, by another 0 0.04 uh, pixels. So actually it, it doesn't go down anymore. And then it's 0 0.5 actually for this such a long shot is pretty good already. All right. So now why do we want to export? Okay, so some of you might, uh, might ask what is the purpose of this video? Why do I want to export this into like uh, Fusion? All right, because Fusion Fusion Studio, if you own uh, Fusion Studio uh, or if you have a free version of the uh, DaVinci Resolve, okay, you will notice that uh, if you are using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, uh, you find that you will not be able, uh, or rather, uh, the free version of DaVinci Resolve Fusion, you will find that you will not be able to use the, uh, the camera tracker. Okay, so, but uh, you have most of the powerful compositing node compositor uh, that is available in DaVinci Resolve. So if you can actually do your tracking, okay, let's say especially if you want very a lot of precision, you want to uh, get a good manual uh, track on a shot, right? And since you can't use the tracker within the, uh, the free version of Fusion, so there's one workflow which is what I'm doing now is to track your shot in Blender first and then you export the track data into Fusion or the uh, Resolve uh, Fusion, okay? So I'm going to show you how you can bring that data into uh, how to export it out from Blender first and then bring it into uh, Fusion. Okay, so um, let's put it some 3D objects like what I did here. So uh, once you finish tracking, all right, you can go over by creating a layout. You can click on plus, go to general, create a layout because I started this uh, shot by as a VFX uh, shot. So uh, go and create a, a layout. Then you can go to layout. Okay, after you have uh, done your shot, let's say you want to decorate the items, uh, the the desktop. Now to change to camera view, you can press number pad zero or press the tilde key to bring up the pie menu. Press and hold, and then uh, select view camera. Okay, after that you will have to pan because if I middle bounce click and drag, right, I will lose my view. 
right so right now I'm in wireframe mode I'm gonna change to solid uh, so that I can see uh, what I'm doing so everything you can see is already been lined up okay so um, I don't think I want to go through how I line up this uh, because I already explained in my other video um, on how to do that so how do I create this object here all right so I'm gonna delete this object press X to delete and I'm going to create um, because I placed my origin here press shift C to put the uh, cursor back to the origin and then shift A create a object let's create a cube again then I'm going to press G Z 1 then press tab to go to edit mode press number 3 on the keyboard to go to face selection mode then press F to scale this down then uh, press G, Z to bring it up. Okay, so now I'm gonna press A to select all. Then press S followed by Shift Z to bring it down. Okay, so you notice that this object right now is lined up on the floor. Then now I want to apply a modifier so that I can have a row of these objects all across the ground. So I'm gonna apply a modifier by clicking on this banner. Uh, icon then add a array and then I'm going to change the offset uh, instead from the x-axis here I'm going to change that to 0 I'm going to offset it in the y-axis so x y just put it y-axis like that then I want to give it several counts okay maybe that's too much maybe I'll give it about 8 and then I'll increase the offset so that I have a bunch of evenly spaced uh, columns now why I'm doing that is because of the nature of this shot so with the columns I will know okay whether the my track is good and whether they are staying put on the ground so far so good okay they don't appear to be sliding you can zoom in by using your mouse wheel or you can click on the magnifying glass here and you can scrub the frame back and forth just to inspect and check that your track is good all right you can also press Z, go to wireframe, just to check that your track is good. Okay, you can see that the origin is staying put onto that corner there. Okay. So I got a good track. Okay, and uh, now I want to export this. So let me just save this file first. I'm going to save a different version. And I'm going to export this out as a Alembic file. Now I've done many experiments. I tried exporting as an FBX and uh, importing into uh, into this uh, Fusion and uh, also into Maya. I found that uh, the Alembic file is, uh, is it works a little bit better. All right, but however, it has some issues. Okay, which I'm going to show you. So to export this file, just go to export and then choose Alembic. And then I'm going to give it a file. So this I'm going to export it again. I'm going to use pretty much the default values, right? Uh, start frame one and then end frame three to six, and uh, yeah, pretty much everything as default. And then I'm just going to export Alembic. Okay, so now the file has been exported, and I'm going to bring it first within uh, the. Uh, bring it within uh, DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So I'm going to start a brand new project. So I'm going to click here, go to the home button in uh, DaVinci Resolve. And I'm going to click on new project. I'm going to call it uh, Alembic Import. And then create. Okay, I should have a new uh, project, which is empty. Now, here is the very important thing that you need to take note of. That is your frame uh, frame rate settings. Okay, let's go and take a look at the original footage. The original footage on my desktop looks like this. If I right mouse click on it and then go to properties, and if you go to the details, you should be able to see the frame rate. It is actually at 25.02. Because this is shot on a mobile phone, uh, they tend to use a variable uh, frame rate and also highly compressed okay so we're going to round it off to 25 all right 
and if you install media info if you got this media info program which is a free program you can uh, see that the frame rate is actually close to 25 frames per second all right so it is shot at a full HD setting so with that with that we have to make sure that our project settings is also at 25 frames per second now if you run DaVinci Resolve the default of DaVinci Resolve uh, will be at uh, 24 frames per second so you will it is very important that you set okay, your project settings if you go to preferences um, okay sorry not under preferences okay if you go to project settings right you have to make sure that you change your timeline frame rate and your playback frame rate to 25 this is very important okay and then we're gonna save okay otherwise you will have jittering problems right so once your project settings has been uh, set okay let me just check the project settings again 25 25 okay then the next thing you want to do okay we can go over to the uh, the media uh, portion right now we don't have any media in uh, we're gonna go straight to the edit portion and we're gonna create a new timeline so right mouse click timeline create a new timeline and uh, we are going to make sure that we use custom settings then uh, go over to the format and make sure the timeline is 25 seconds uh, 25 frames per second right that is very important okay and then we just check make sure everything is uh, okay and then just click create okay so now we have a timeline okay so now we have to create the fusion clip all right same thing the fusion clip will has to match the 25 uh, frames per second uh, requirement so right mouse click add a new fusion composition and then check that it is at 25 frames per second duration all right our duration of our video clip all right is about 13 uh, seconds all right so we're going to give it a little bit extra because we can trim that later so we're going to give about 14 seconds so that there's some extra frames that we can play around with then uh, just going click on create so now we have the fusion clip so drag the fusion clip into the edit timeline and make sure that your uh, this playback uh, indicator all right, is touching the fusion clip then you can click on fusion right, later I'll show you guys how to do that in fusion studio but um, basically it is uh, quite straightforward, straightforward like that okay uh, I'm gonna disable this keyframe so this is what you have right now you have a fusion uh, composition which is empty so now we have to bring in the alembic file into the fusion composition so right mouse click here uh, sorry uh, right mouse click first to bring in the uh, image frames okay I already converted my uh, the image sequence into a uh, image sequence so I'm gonna click on in right mouse click on this bin here and then import media then navigate to the folder containing your image sequence okay for Okay, for the um, fusion in uh, Resolve, you will have to select every single frame. So to do that, you select the first frame, then go to the last frame holding down the shift and left mouse click, and then go and click open. Then fusion will recognize it as a image sequence. Now, if you only click on the first frame in the uh, fusion in uh, Resolve, it will only bring in that first frame. Uh, for some reason in fusion, uh, it actually recognizes it automatically as a uh, sequence. Okay, so that's one thing you need to take note of so this is the first clip that we prepare first we're gonna bring in our media and then I'm going to rename it press F2 call it image sequence and then now we're gonna import in our uh, alembic file all right so to import the alembic file you have to go over to fusion okay in the menu here fusion import and then go and import the alembic scene and then we're going to navigate to the file that we have exported so which is this uh, this one and then I'm gonna click on open and you're gonna see uh, this menu and it is important to read this information the file information uh, so the detected sampling rates and the frame rate is uh, 25 so that means it uh, and also make sure that this box is 25 okay again dependent depending on the frame rate that you are working on this is extremely important because if you get the frame rate wrong okay your uh, matching will not be uh, will not work all right so then we can click OK 
So what's going to happen here is that it brings in... Now, th this is going to be a little bit different if you're doing it in the Fusion standalone. So you're going to bring in the camera, all right? It brings in a merge, merge node and then the uh, cube-shaped object and the ground object. Now, we need to see... Uh, now, by default, we have two viewer windows. You can just click here to see only one window. We want to see what we have brought in. So just click on the Merge 3D node and drag it on top to the viewer. Since we already have a camera, can right mouse click on this shape here and then we can look through the camera shape and then sure enough we have the animated camera that is already brought in okay you can scrub the timeline and you can see it being brought in but now we need to bring in the image sequence so that we can see it behind okay so uh, right now I don't need this uh, media pool I can click on this media pool to hide it so that we can have a bigger view and uh, so now we want to see the image sequence behind uh, the camera. Right now we're looking through the camera shape. So drag the output of the image sequence which we have brought in and then connect it to the camera shape. And then you can see, oh, okay, everything seems to be fine. Everything seems to be matched. Then if you play back, you'll notice that it starts to jitter. Okay, what is going on here? All right, so when we do our match moving in Blender, the first frame that starts is actually at frame 1 okay at frame 1 so what happens is that during the export uh, in the lambic right it's still playing back at frame 1 uh, but it bring the frame 1 to frame 0 so what we need to do is we need to push the entire sequence right offset it by one frame so we go over to our keyframes tab all right and then you will see okay because uh, of the of the extra length that we set uh, instead of uh, 13 seconds for our clip we set 14 seconds that's why you have these extra frames so you can see our image sequence right is starting at frame 0 so to go to the image sequence you can see the image sequence listed here all right on this uh, area here all right so this is the image sequence and this colorful dots right this shows the animated curves of the camera so we want to click on this image sequence and then drag it forward one frame. All right. So of course the first uh, frame zero will disappear. That that's uh, normal. And then now you can see once I play back, everything seems to match. However, then something seems to be off. All right. You'll notice something seems to be off. Okay. If your playback is a bit slow, move your cursor over this empty area here. Right mouse click uncheck high quality uncheck motion blur then uh, turn on auto proxy okay this will might speed up the uh, preview renders a bit okay it seems to be matching but you notice that the columns right are offset okay and if you go back to the blender track you will see that okay the columns are supposed to be uh, in behind this concrete right my 3d columns and it's supposed to be sitting right on top of this uh, corner here. So let's go back to uh, the Fusion in DaVinci Resolve. And you and we got this ground plane. I'm going to get rid of this ground plane. So we can un disconnect it. Okay, so we don't see. And you can see that, yeah, the, the origin is not matching. So this is a... I'm not sure whether this is a, to call this a bug. Okay, it seems that it reduces the uh, the scaling all right of the FOV or rather the the way fusion reads the alembic right uh, is a bit off so we from my experiments right I discovered that you can add a scale scale node okay before or rather after before the camera uh, and uh, after the image uh, sequence and then I want to change it reduce the size to 0 0.8 that means uh, basically reducing it by uh, almost about 20%. Okay, so when you play back, now you can see that it is matching our shot. Okay, however, we need to be, we need to render this out later on, right? So if I were to uh, drag this, uh, create a render output first, create a render node, let me undo that. I need to deselect first, create a render 3D or renderer and then we connect this to the renderer and then connect it to the media output if i were to view this 
you can see that there is this big empty space here because our image sequence has been scaled down. So this method uh, might not be ideal because by scaling down, I'm going and if I'm going to rescale this back again, I'm going to lose my, the resolution of my background plate here. So I figured that I will have to go and change the FOV of my camera. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this transform. And then I'm so that you can see the image right now, it scales back up again, but we still have that problem. So we're going to look through the merge 3D node again. And then we are going to click on the camera shape. You, get, you can see a lock icon on the node. That means right, right now it's been locked. I can't change the values. So if we go over to the inspector, in order to change the values, we have to unlock it. All right. So the value that I came up with is 0 0.24. All right, 0 0.24. We need to add about 0.24% of 28.33. Uh, 3. 3. Okay, 0 0.24% uh, percent of uh, 28.33 focal length. You had to do some calculations, which I did earlier on. All right, and I get a value of 6. Point, uh, around 6.8. And then finally, the cal I actually ra rounded off the value. It's actually, to be precise, 0 0.23, then with a bunch of uh, numbers behind. So I rounded off to about 0 0.24. So 0 0.24 of 28.59 is 6.86. So I added this value, and I got a value of about 35.4. Okay. So I'm going to enter and change the focal length and change it to 35.4. And then press Enter. Right, be careful make sure you don't hit the uh, keyframe otherwise you will have some problems okay the value will change and now you can see the uh, columns are lined up perfectly okay and uh, if you want to see the columns a little bit better with a 3d shape within the uh, merge 3d view just right mouse click okay go to 3d options and then turn on lighting and you'll notice the uh, background plate has sort of uh, become darker so we do not want that to happen so we will go over to the cam well uh, the camera shape is still selected go over to your inspector and click on the image and then go over to lighting and then uncheck this affected by lights all right so you will have this view looking like that so i can now click on playback and then uh, you can see that everything is lining up properly now Okay, so here are the things that you need to, need to take note if you're bringing in the track information into uh, the Fusion in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, that is, you have to check your frame rate is correct of your footage, the image sequence footage. And then you must also uh, ensure that you change your focal length to by multiplying it, uh, getting a 0.24 percentage of your original focal length and then adding that value okay onto the final focal length okay so this is the the only problem that i discovered okay but alembic is quite stable compared to fbx i tried using fbx and i couldn't get it to match okay the uh but i'll have to warn you if your alembic file or your track file in blender right has a lot of uh of bad track points sometimes the export right might export out uh data that might be a bit unpredictable but so far I think this this workflow uh, if you're doing manual tracking uh, is working very well for me okay so now that I've got this to work then you can do a lot of things with it already you can bring in uh, like a image sequence and then or rather you can bring in a uh, let me just try to bring in let's go to my media pool and then bring in another media Okay, let me just bring in a simple image uh, to try out first.
Okay, let's look for some images with a PNG transparency. Uh, let's search for Okay, I'm not sure whether this is a real PNG uh, with a transparency, but let's just try uh, looking for a few more. Okay, this one is probably a uh, yeah a image with transparency. And I'm just going to put this on my desktop so I can access it quickly. Okay, so the useful thing about this is that right now I can add in a, uh, a cardboard, literally. Okay, I got this one already, so I just put it in. Now I cannot just put it within the uh, Merge 3D. I have to create a flat plane first, uh, image plane. All right, and so I will create an image plane node. Right, and then I will link it into the plane okay right now the image plane 3d doesn't have any image on it it's empty so i need to uh, bring in this clip which I, which i found and then i'll just put it in and then right now i can see uh, whether let's see whether i can see the image plane you can see right here it's very very small i can go over to the image plane 3d and the transform nodes and then just bring it up and i can just put it where I want him to be okay so let me just bring him back again okay so if you want to orient him you can also go to perspective shape and then holding down to uh, control and middle mouse click okay right now he's floating in the air holding down the control and just putting it on a ground plane okay so now I can just position it and then I can scale him up a little bit because right now he looks a little bit small okay so let's take a look at it through the camera again right mouse click go to camera shape and then we have our character appearing inside Okay, the shot. Okay, so this is just a quick example of how you can use. And then once you have a pr uh, proper track and all that, right, uh, you can literally stick objects, right, if you can find out the exact uh, position, right, of the of the tracker points. Okay, the good thing about uh, Blender is that you can export tracker points as a mesh object. All right, if I go over to the like for example, remember the pigeon here? If I select this tracker point, and if I s go over to the uh, geometry area here, and then I say 3D markers uh, to mesh. Okay, so it actually converted marker right into a mesh in the layout, so that you can see it in the distance out there. You can see a, a dot, right? This dot is actually a mesh object. So I can convert this, or I can place another object okay, if I go over and select this object I can place another object here and just lock it into place so I press shift s cursor to select it okay I have to right mouse click on this object first origin origin to geometry all right I have to set the center here then uh, shift s cursor to select it ah, so now whatever I create will be there I can place a monkey head here. Okay, so if I rotate this, R, X, and R, Z. So this is the location of where that uh, pigeon was. I mean, at, at least in the tracker view. So later, when I were to export this out, okay, I will have this, the monkey head right in the distance over there. All right. So in fact, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to export this out. Let me just go press tab to go up to object mode. 
file, export it to Alembic again. And then I'm going to just add, then export. This is Alembic number three. Okay, so I've shown you guys how to do that in uh, DaVinci Resolve Fusion. And if you go back to the edit, right, you should be able to see the rendered clip out looking just nice. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do that in Fusion right now. So if I go and open up Fusion. So same thing for Fusion. You have to make sure that your Fusion Studio, okay, your, make sure your Fusion Studio, the global settings is at the frame format is set to 25 frames per second. This is very, very important. Okay, so depending on the clip that you work on, it's very important that you do it that way. All right, so you save it, then you restart uh, Fusion again. So I'm gonna start this all over again, and we're gonna use the, the exactly the same workflow to uh, bring in the Alembic file. So I'm gonna click on File, New, New Composition. Okay, so we have the previous one there. So we got a second composition. Um, now, of course, working in uh, combo in the uh, in the Fusion Studio standalone is a little bit uh, more straightforward. Now, you notice that my new composition only has two hundred and fifty frames. You can set your default right to start up with uh, a limited number of frames because right now uh, my defaults I I don't like it when they start off with one thousand frames. Okay, the default is one thousand. So what I did is I go to my default. And my global range, I only started at uh, 250 frames. Okay, so uh, it's just a nice average value for a lot of uh, visual effects clips. Because I know that my uh, my shot has about 325 frames, I'm going to give it about 326 frames. Okay, for and also the render range, okay, indicated by these yellow lines, which is also indicated by these two boxes here. I also want to change it to 226. Okay, so now we want to bring in our uh, Alembic file. So I'm going to click on File. I'm going to click on Import Alembic Scene. And we're going to bring in the latest one that contains the monkey head. Same thing, check that it's 25 frames per second. All right, then click OK. So uh, there are sometimes there are these uh, check boxes like inverse transform, normals and UVs and points. Now if you don't have all these things right, you can uncheck them. What we want to bring in is our cameras and meshes. All right, and then click OK. Now you can see the notes that it was brought in is, is a little bit different compared to the notes in uh, the uh, the Fusion in uh, DaVinci Resolve. Okay. So you can see that it brought in a few extra notes. Uh, it brought in the uh, the translate. Okay, each of these uh, objects, right, the mesh will have a translate. Now, this one is actually the monkey head. Okay, and then this is the ground plane, which is generated every time you uh, create scene after solving in Blender. Then of course the cube shape, the columns that I've duplicated. Then of course we have our cameras. So these are actually transform notes, right? And then this is actually a merge note, but which they name it as ABC. Okay, so I'm going to drag the ABC and then to see what we are looking at. Then now we want to look through the camera. We have one camera here. So right mouse click and then look through the camera. And then same thing, you can notice this time we have the monkey head over there now. Okay, so we want to bring in the image sequence. So to bring in an image sequence rather than import a clip, we have to use the loader, the loader button which is here. And then you can click on the sequence. Okay, notice that in uh, Fusion Studio, we, I don't have to select the whole bunch of files. It recognizes it as a sequence straight away and then click open. And then we can drag the output and then connect it to the camera shape. And then we can see the same uh, shot again. So I'm going to maximize this shot. And we'll see that we have exactly the same problem. Um, Okay, we don't need the ground. I'm going to disconnect the ground. In fact, I can delete it by uh, clicking on backspace. And then it'll be gone. And next, we want to adjust the value okay, of the uh, focal length, okay, which already been calculated to be about 30, 35.4. All right. So remember, the, the value that I've uh, gotten out is 0 0.24. 
okay, 0.24. So if you were to apply this value, 0.24 and calculate even for other shots, you will also get the same result, which I'm, I'm gonna demonstrate, okay, using another shot with a different frame rate, okay? So um, right now, um, I got to change the um, FOV, so we have to unlock the camera first. So click on the unlock menu, uh, item here to unlock, and then go over to the focal length, and then we're gonna change it to 35.4, and then press enter. And then now we have our match. And then you notice, okay, I'm gonna turn off high quality, uh, uncheck motion blur, turn on auto proxy. And it should play back a little bit faster. You can see that our match is wrong. Okay, uh, we already know why this is wrong because there is a we need to offset the whole sequence one frame. All right, so go over and turn on keyframes. Make sure you select your image sequence and turn on keyframes. And now your image sequence is selected, and then we can push the image sequence by clicking on the center here. Left mouse click and drag forward one frame. Just need to drag forward until you see three two six. All right. Then now, if I play back, I should get a perfect match. Okay, as usual, you want to change the uh, the the look of this uh, view. Okay, right mouse click and change the three D options and turn on lighting, right? And also, you do not want the this uh, back plate to be affected by the. Uh, by the light, so you click on the uh, camera shape, then go over to the uh, image values here, go over to lighting and then uncheck affected by lights. So in case you, uh, if you do want to accidentally move the camera, you can turn on the lock again. Okay, then now you can bring in other things and you can start to composite. And notice that you can see the monkey head, right, it is exactly at where the uh, pigeon was, right? So this is what I mean by, let's say you want to do things like uh, building replacement, you want to add, uh, attach an object. So you can actually go back to Blender to solve uh, that point, And then you can bring it in as a piece of uh, geometry or a 3D shape. And then there's a lot of possibilities you can do. All right, you can add in 3D objects, you can change the environment, all right? As for the monkey head, you can see that it's appearing through the walls. Then, of course, you can use rotoscoping tool. You can use the very powerful rotoscoping tools, right, in uh, in Fusion, right, to fix that. Okay, which I I will not be talking about this. I'll probably talk about that in another lesson. Okay, so that is how you bring it in uh, the alembic file into uh, Fusion. All right. So let's try this out with another file which I have uh, tracked and solved. Okay, so let me just open a recent one, which is, uh, I believe is this one. Okay, so this file here uh, was also solved pretty much the same way. Everything is manually uh, tracked and solved. Okay, with all these manual trackers and uh, so I've exported it out as a HDB solve in fact I've selected a bunch of uh, tracker points and the solve error is 0 0.46 which is also pretty good I you can actually select a bunch of tracker points and during the export uh, or during geometry I converted them into a mesh that's why you see a, a mesh object here Okay, but uh, if you go over to 3D view, you can see the mesh is pretty much lined up with the floor. I can also use this to check whether my lineup is correct. And also, I created a mesh uh, just from these uh, four tracker points, right, to uh, cover over this uh, manhole, manhole cover. Okay, so when I exported this, uh, this one for this particular shot, uh, for some reason, right, uh, because I'm using different softwares on my phone to shoot the video, this was actually playing back at 30 frames per second. All right, so if I go and verify, so this is actually 30 frames per second. So now I'm going to go back to Fusion here and I'm going to change my uh, playback to Fusion. I'm going to create a new composition. And then uh, in my composition settings, Go over to preferences, 
composition number three, frame format. I'm gonna change this to 30 frames per second. Then I'm gonna bring in the the alembic file which I already exported. So you can just export and then choose alembic. Okay, this is what I've actually done. All right, and uh, let's see. Yeah, I already exported this once before. Uh, okay, let me try export uh, bringing this in again. Let me just re-export it again. And then bring it in here. So file, import, Alembic scene, uh, Alembic export, uh, I think it's HDB Solve 3. Yeah, HDB Solve 3 and then I'll just open. And here, because my, my previous default was 25, I have to manually change it to 30. So this is very important, change it to 30 frames per second. And then click OK. We're going to drag the ABC uh, node. Just click and drag it to our viewport here. Right mouse click and then go to camera shape. And there you have it. You have all the 3D objects. And it's playing back nicely. Okay, now we have to bring in the image sequence. So click on bring in image sequence. And for this one, I believe it is sequence number two. And I think it is, yeah, this one. Then just bring it in. Then connect this sequence into the camera shape. And you can see that we have our problem, the same exact problem. And now we're going to do some calculations. We're going to look at the camera's uh, value here. So it's 0 0.27. Point one six seven five. So the numbers that I have crunched is zero point two four. So I'm gonna clear this. So twenty seven point one six seven. So twenty seven point one six seven. Okay, times zero point two four, which is six point five two. So six point five two plus twenty seven point one six seven. is 33.6 so I need to change this value to 33.6 but you notice I can't change it because it's locked so I'm gonna so it's 33.6 and then change and then you can see that it is now matching well there's still one more thing that we need to do so if you remember we need to offset our image sequence forward by one frame so you need to go over the keyframes okay you need to get uh, grab the image sequence and then push it out to one frame and now if I play back you can see now everything is matched perfectly right and then to change the lighting I'm gonna go to the right mouse click on the 3d view go to turn on the lighting and for my uh, camera uh, shape okay the back plane the black plate I'm gonna go to the lighting and then uncheck affected by lights I'm gonna lock the camera again and then now I can see the entire sequence. Now this sequence is only 180 frames, so I'm gonna scrub over to 180, and then I'm gonna drag the uh, render. Okay, I think it's, you need to hold down to Shift or Control. Oh no, you just make sure that this thing is highlighted. This is the render range. Just drag it down until it is uh, the correct range, which is actually uh, 179. So we only st we start at frame one. So I'm gonna start at frame one, the render range, frame one, and then we're gonna start the timeline, time ruler at frame one. Okay, so there's hundred actually hundred and seventy nine frames that will be rendered out. Okay, so of course nothing can be rendered out right now. This is the fusion standalone. So if you want it to be rendered out, you need to first. Uh, connect the output of the 3D merge. This is actually a 3D merge node to a render 3D. So if we take a look at the render 3D, this is what it looks like. Okay, the reason why it looks like this right now is uh, we need to change our render 3D. You can change the software renderer or OpenGL renderer. And because we never really put any lights, everything just look constant like that. All right. Okay, and then after that, you have to connect this to a saver which can uh, save it as an image sequence or just save it out as a QuickTime movie. All right, you have to change the extension to an MOV file so that uh, Fusion will output it as an MOV. All right, so right now these shapes right, don't really have any uh, colors. So let me just uh, create a blend 
Control Shift B L I and N. Just create a simple material first. Then connect it to my uh, all my different shapes. And then just give it a color. All right, and then I just connect it to even the cube. All right, so everything has some color. We don't have any lights, so we can create a light. Uh, let's create a point light. Well, actually, a directional light, so we have a uh, light from all different sources, and connect that to our three D node. Okay, and then uh, let's go go into the node first and then right now the light is not pointing at the objects so we need to switch over right mouse click to perspective the light you can see is on the ground so we're gonna bring the light up and then rotate it downwards so that all the objects are illuminated okay so can I see through the light let me just check yes I can go to right mouse click on perspective go to other and then look through the directional light so right now I can just uh, adjust and holding down the control to zoom out and then we can adjust the light direction. Now you notice something wrong with the uh, this cube here. Now the cube appears to be black. Now this is one, one issue that might happen. Uh, that is because the normals of the cube is actually pointing inside. So we can fix that by uh, selecting the cube only selecting only the cube then go over to export it out as a alembic file but this time change to selected object only but before we do that we need to flip the normals of this cube okay so i'm going to select this cube then in blender then go to edit all right and then go to uh, mesh normals and then flip okay so now you can see the normals i actually turn on uh, normals viewable which is actually inside the overlays here. Yeah, the normals on the face are viewable. So right now you can see the normals are pointing in the correct direction. Then press tab, then select the cube, and then uh, go to export again, Alembic, and uh, only selected objects. Then this time I'm just gonna call it underscore cube only. Then click export Alembic. So it will only export this selected object. So I can go over here, I can get rid of this cube shape. I can just select the cube shape and then uh, delete it. Then go and import file, import Alembic. Then go and import in the cube only. And I only want to bring in the meshes and then click import. Okay, so now we have the cube. I don't need this transform. I can plug this back into the uh, cube again. And then this time, if I zoom out or if I look through the camera, okay, the cube is there. Oh, okay. Um, I made a mistake there. I need the original transform. Let me just get rid of this. Get rid of the cube shape. Let me try that again. File, import, Alembic scene, uh, cube only. Only the meshes and then click OK. And then with the transform, I will plug it into, and then we get the cube back. And then this time the cube has a proper shading. And then if I can connect it to the color, it's no longer black. Okay, so this is just to explain to you all what is happening here. Okay, so once you're ready, and then you can look at the renderer, and then we can see what it looks like. So we can turn on in our renderer 3D, we enable lighting, okay, and shadows. Okay, we don't have any shadows. Uh, generated because we're using a directional light okay only the spotlight in uh, in this uh, fusion will uh, generate shadows okay so once you're happy with this you can render so render you just click on render now i'm not going to do that because it's going to take some time uh, now i'm going to jump over to how you were to import the information to uh, maya instead now let's say for some reason you want to do your rendering in maya because you want to use the maya's uh, features Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do that in Maya. Now Maya, for Maya is a little bit more straightforward. Now Maya seems to read the Alembic file in a much more predictable fashion. Okay, so let's just start from a new scene. And then uh, once you start Maya, you're going to bring the Alembic file. We just need to click on import. 
and then look for the uh, exported al alembic file i'm going to use the uh, the one we exported earlier on and then you can see we have our the monkey head and then the the, the files that have been uh, brought in okay so now we're going to click on panels then look through the camera and if you scrub the timeline okay we know that we have uh, 325 frames for this shot so we're gonna increase our frame range to 325 325 then our frame rate is not 24 frames per second so we had to change that to 25 frames per second you will know that the numbers will start to have all these uh, decimal values so you have to force the decimal values to disappear this step is very important. If you do not do this step in Maya, again, you will have that jitteriness and the, the match will be off. All right. So we go scrub the timeline until it starts at one. Okay. You notice that it starts at one. It's not, it didn't start at zero. So that's a very important thing to note. So once you got this uh, file in already, you want to bring in the back, backdrop, uh, backdrop or the image sequence. So to do that, you click on view, image plane, import image. Then navigate to the folder containing the image sequence. Okay, you just need to click on the first one, then click open. Then under the image sequence, use uh, make sure you check on uh, use image sequence. And you notice, hey, where is my where is the backdrop? I can't see it. All right. So this happens quite a lot uh, when you bring in a camera. Sometimes the the camera that is brought in uh, from other exports, right? The clipping range is very limited. So you need to select the camera. You can select the camera in the outliner or you can click on panels or rather click on view when you're looking through the camera and then you can click on select camera. Then go over to the attributes. Go over to the uh, near clip and the far clip plane. Make sure your near clip plane uh, is low. Okay, you can change it to 0 0.001. Just give it a very small value. Actually, the original value 0 0.1 is good enough because I do not want to see those artifacts on my 3D object. The far clip plane, however, you just give it a ridiculously large number. Then eventually you will see the uh, the 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 back uh, the back plate, right? The image plane. Now let's play back and see how it goes. You notice that we do not have to do any offset. Okay, the for some reason the uh, Maya right is able to read the uh, image sequence properly. And then you can see the, the playback is good. Now, for some of you, if your playback is playing back at a very crazy rate, you can click on this running man and then make sure that it's playing back. The playback speed is at 25 frames per second. Okay. So that is how you bring in the uh, tracked data into Maya. Now, you notice for Maya's case, we don't have to fiddle around with the focal length. Alright, so that is the beauty about uh, using uh, the Maya's uh, import features. For some reason, Maya is able to read the Lambic file properly and then you don't have to do the calculation for the focal, uh, uh, for the focal plane, okay, for the focal length in, uh, in Fusion instead. Okay, so now you can see this one matches very well. Okay, I'm going to just hide this. Press H to hide this. You can press uh, number 4 to go to wireframe. And you can see the origin and the ground is actually matching pretty well. You can check to see whether there's any sliding going around. And the match looks good. Okay, so I want you to use this knowledge uh, to, to try it out. Okay, so if you have the, uh, the free version of uh, DaVinci Resolve Fusion, okay, you can use the method which I've uh, taught you to uh, okay to try out the matching and then see whether it works okay so I hope this information is useful and, and especially for people who are interested in uh, match moving and uh, doing visual effects and then from my own students right I want you to uh, to try this out yourself okay but first okay please go and use the manual do the manual tracking yourself okay i already uh, done the demonstration on this already so uh, please take note of the stuff that i've uh, explained before 
and then uh, try out manual tracking okay so remember manual manual tracking or supervised tracking is like the de facto uh, standard in a lot of uh, professional visual effects houses um, because the human eye is able to uh, make out details or know uh, what the computer has done wrong as compared to um, a lot of auto features now uh, I've, as, as, as I've explained before automatic is good when you have an ideal situation like the shots that I'm demonstrating here they are typically ideal situations uh, where you can uh, where there's a lot of details and features that are very clear there's not a lot of crazy camera motion uh, that cause a lot of motion blur and all this kind of stuff so uh, you can uh, if you have this kind of shot yeah run it through the auto tracker boom everything will be done okay but um, if you see me demonstrating how to track this shot using the auto tracker you will find that sometimes the auto tracker for the uh, for blender for blender doesn't really work very well the features and the kind of trackers that you assign right uh, will, will sometimes go astray so for more professional trackers like Syntax it's not a problem okay but when you have a complex or very difficult uh, shot to track okay whether is it an uh, object that you need to track or whether the trackers appears or disappears or where it's moving uh, too fast then that's where the manual tracking the supervised tracking is important that is what I want you guys to take away from and and understand all right okay so um, basically I think this video has gone long enough uh, hopefully that you guys will spend your break time uh, to do some shots of your own and I challenge you to actually take some video shots of your own and then try to track those now if you shoot your own video then there are a lot of things you need to consider you have to make sure that your shots have a lot of good features for you to track right if if you're shooting a plain wall where there's absolutely nothing it is as good as uh, as, as shooting some uh, useless footage because there's nothing there's no point of reference to track and make sure you have parallax okay and I've talked about nodal shots as well compared to free camera shots so you need to understand the difference between these two and also if you can you go ahead and shoot a simple nodal shot Okay, take your camera and then do a slow pan and then you try to track the shot as well now for my own students right you've been provided the files so please go and download those files and try to uh, track those shots yourself okay now for the rest of the audience on YouTube right um, if you are interested I'll probably uh, do a more comprehensive uh, video on tracking okay so with that um, I hope that uh, this information is useful and uh, I hope you guys can try this out yourself and yeah thanks for watching I will stop the video now